Hi, everybody. Dorothy here, professional astrologer. Going to talk about the week of September 28, and that includes the harvest moon in the sign of Aries on October 1st, and a few other things. So let's just get started. I'll share a few charts with you too, just so if you guys were learning, get to see what I'm talking about. So starting on, we're just going to go from Monday right to Tuesday. I'm just going to start with Tuesday because on Tuesday, the 29th, this is when Saturn is stationary to go direct. It happens at 1.11 a.m. on Eastern time. And we got a lot of aspects this week, right? Things that would make us feel like we have a lot to do and feeling like there's a lot of movement and stuff, but we're going to be feeling a fair amount of frustration with this because even though there's a lot of aspects that say, move, 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 let's do stuff, let's do stuff. We also have Saturn station. And when Saturn is stationed, so far, all of September, Saturn has been at that 25th degree of Capricorn even though it's still retrograde. And again, as of the 29th, in the middle of the night, and if you're on the West Coast, it's going to be in the middle of the night on the 28th, same thing. It's stationary. And it's even though it's moving direct as of the 29th, it is still sitting still at 25 degrees. It's like, you know, stopping a train. It's going to take a little while for it to just to get moving, even if the engines are revving in the right direction. So we're going to feel this a little bit or a lot, even frustration, but at least we're heading in the right direction now, right? We're not internalizing things, but we're ready for this energy of Saturn and Capricorn to start moving forward. The first kickstart it gets is that at 5.50 p.m. Eastern time on the same day, the 29th, Mars squares Saturn. So how about I share that screen with you? And let me see. What's this chart? Here we go. And so here is Mars square Saturn. And here is a little while later, here's Saturn. You can see a big the uh, black S, that means it's stationary. It's going to go direct. And so here we are, Mars square Saturn. So Mars and Aries retrograde. What does that represent? Mars and Aries is wanting to take steps and take action and move and fight and strive and thrive. It wants all this action. It is retrograde. And when it's retrograde, that means it's been retrograde since September 9th. So 20 days now it's been retrograde. So we're starting to internalize some of this. So things are going to go back inward, 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 inward. And squaring Saturn, these two malefics squaring each other creates a sense of I need to move forward, but something's holding me back. So we're going to feel a fair amount of frustration uh, this whole week. And again, until Saturn really gets moving, we'll probably feel a level of frustration off and on for another month. There's so many things going on right now, and we know that, but we're feeling frustration. But it's good that these Capricorn planets are moving forward. Pluto will move forward on Sunday the 4th, and he does that. That's part of this week's forecast too. So I'll just jump ahead real quick and then come back in a sec. So Pluto goes direct Sunday, 9.30 in the morning, Eastern time. And again, he doesn't, he barely moves three degrees a year. So he's not moving forward too fast. But in the meantime, Saturn stationing, Mars squaring Saturn. This is the second time they're squaring in these cardinal signs. So again, we will feel a level of stress and frustration on some, on some level, right? It's going to be different for everybody, but on some level, we're going to feel that. And so allow that to shift. And if it feels too frustrating, I mean, there's no sense beating your head against a wall. Just stop and let things be what they are. That's just one of the easier ways to allow these things to happen. We have movement, but just allow this to be what it is. Take baby steps if you can, all right? I have this forecast. It's written out, not word for word, but it's written out on my website, nhastrologer.com. Um, if you're on YouTube, there's a link below in the com in the um, in the in, in, uh, information section under this video, um, or just go to that website, click on the written forecast, and you can read this weekly. I do it weekly, so come to. You can also join the newsletter because I will I send the the forecast out once a week as well. And I'm not a massive marketer, so you'll just get emails for that. All right, so that's what we have going on there. So I'm going to stop the share. What else do I have happening? Let, let me see. I have so many notes. Hold on. Um, right, more of this. I had to look at my notes to refresh my memory. 
Capricorn energy, whereas of course Saturn is Jupiter and Pluto, you know, with this Mars transit to Saturn, I mean, we are really going to focus as well on a career and how we feel safe. Are we feeling safe? We've talked about this quite a few times throughout these last few months since these planets all went retrograde, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto in May, that second week in May. And so, I mean, with the planets moving direct and Mars making this connection, and it made a connection to Jupiter recently, Saturn now and Pluto later on uh, next week. What do you? What are we going to do? Is just like we're we needing to focus in on on Capricornian type things. So that would be our career, our reputation. How safe and secure do you feel? Everybody's experiencing these turbulent times differently. So, in your world, where are you able to take those steps? You know in your career is are you doing fine with it or are you did your job go away and you're needing to figure out how to build a different career or not necessarily a better career but a different career or even a better suited career that will help you to stay more safe and feel more secure that's what these some of these things that are coming up are all about. How secure and safe do I feel? And a lot of fear it comes to the surface, which produces action. But I don't want you to take action from fear. I want you to recognize where it's coming from and what's going on and then take actions from there. So you can better yourself. You can better maybe your education if you need to. Take steps towards what your career and what those um, what makes you feel very comfortable. That's what this energy represents. And right now we're also I'm going to talk about the full moon now that currently we're in the gibbous phase, so the waxing lunar phase before it's full. And that is all of Monday and Tuesday and and even all of Wednesday. So we're in that waxing gibbous phase. So that means we are, you know, things are building and we're our emotions are peaking now. And when they peak is on that full moon at nine degrees of Aries. And that full moon, Eastern time, is on October 1st, Thursday at 5.05 p.m. Eastern time. So that full moon is that culmination. It's a reflection of what's going on. We get to see more in a different light what it is we're working on. Now that it's in the sign of Aries, all right, that represent that that's a nod to mars and mars is connecting to saturn right now and so what that represents is like we need to focus in on what we need oppositions full moons tend to be about me and you you and me our partnerships right and those relationships this full moon in aries is very self-focused mars retrograde in the sign of aries and in the sign of aries for almost seven months is about focusing on what i need and I want to use this in a very positive way. It can be used in a very negative way too. It can be very egotistical and narcissistic and very, very self-centered in a negative way. But in a positive way, we need to use this to find courage, to speak up for ourselves and you know, to be authentic to who we are. And that is what this full moon is representing. Okay? This is the first full moon. The second full moon of the month is on October 31st, and that is a blue moon. They call it the blue moon. It's in a different sign, but it's still in the same calendar month. It's on Halloween, and it's a blue moon. So the second harvest moon of October, full moons in October, harvest moons. Actually, the harvest moon is one closest to the equinox, but the point is this gives us an opportunity to harvest things twice in the same month, but different signs. I'll talk about that next month. But if you want to know more about this, I always talk about lunar phases, and I, I do that um, every single month. We go deep into what each full moon means with my Patreon group on that Patreon platform. So you can go sign in for it up there, or again, if you're on YouTube, it's in the, the comment section below. So come and join me there once a month, and um, it's, a, it's a blast. We get to talk about lots of things and even the deeper meaning of what this full moon is about. All right, so what else do we have in store for this week? Ah, Venus enters the sign of Virgo. That's what is also happening this week. That'll be on Friday, October 2nd at 
4.48 p.m. Eastern Time. So Venus steps out of her Leo costume in that exuberance and that passionate piece of Venus in Leo and then moves into Virgo. So that is, you know, again, we're going to be focusing in on those details. We're going to be very picky, very particular, very precise, focusing in on the details. We're going to, and those are going to be very important for Venus qualities, Venus related items, which are our relationships. So not every single one, and maybe not even at all, if you're not, if that's not even on your radar, but Venus and Virgo shift three and a half weeks from now, focusing in on the details of partnerships and relationships, the things that need to change that are important for you, right? And then Venus also rules our money. So we're going to be really fine, fine tuning that bookkeeping and your finances. And that's something that's going to be really important for all of us. So especially those people who have been, you know, living on a shoestring ever since the shutdown started. So there's going to be a lot of attention focusing on those things. And then the final thing, like I think I already mentioned, yes, I did, is Pluto stations to move direct on Sunday. And we have the monthly connection between on Sunday between the moon and Taurus and Uranus. And that always brings us a spark of new insight and invention and innovation. So that's how we end the week. All right. If you need to know more, I'm right here. And uh, classes, private sessions, you know the routine. Please subscribe and share and comment. Blessings, everybody. Namaste.